Hey guys, this is Eric with Pixel Rookie, and we're going to be looking at this game I recently got called Kenshi. Kenshi is a free roaming squad based RPG, and its entire focus is on open ended gameplay and doesn't really follow a true linear story. If you're familiar with my RimWorld series, I love using these kind of games to share my stories, which is exactly what I want to do with you today. I played Kenshi for a few hours to get a feel for it, and after getting the basics figured out and reading a few helpful guides online, I was ready for an awesome new playthrough with an epic character that tells an amazing story. Well, that didn't really happen. Meet Hot Dog. Hot Dog's a slave. Here's his story. You see, Hot Dog wasn't always a slave. When you start a new game in Kenshi, you create your character. I decided to play the classic scenario where you start with one man, 1,000 cats, which is the game's currency, and not really too much else. I created Hot Dog who was an ambitious man seeking fortune and glory. When the game begins, you're dropped in a town in the middle of the land called The Hub. Hot Dog took in the view of the new city for a moment and realized if he wanted to make a name for himself, he needed money. And what better way to earn money than to labor a copper deposit and sell some minerals? He left the main entrance of the base and began to survey the surrounding area. He found a copper deposit nearby and began mining it out. Things were off to a pretty good start. Well, that wasn't until he was distracted looking over his map and he got jumped by a bunch of starving bandits that were out for blood. Something you learn very quickly in Kenshi is that you're the most worthless character when you begin a new game. Picking a fight with a group of bandits on the first day is a quick way to get killed. So instead of fighting, Hot Dog ran. He ran like he never ran before back towards the hub. You see, Hot Dog was a smart man knew that if they followed him to the hub, he could have the local guards kill them, he'd be able to loot their bodies and sell their belongings. He made it back into the base and ran to the local bar. Men poured out and began fighting. Now the best way to get stronger is to join the fighting when most of the men are already taken out. Oh, well that's not good. Okay, so Hot Dog took a nasty blow to his stomach and he's slowly bleeding to death. Oops. Fortunately, some good Samaritans come by and patch up the wounded men. Wait, what? Slavemonger. Oh sh. Well, it's the first day in Kenshi and Hot Dog already almost died and then got enslaved. This is not what he signed up for. Now that the slavemongers got their new group of sellable goods, they left the hub and carried out Hot Dog since he was still in a recovery coma. At least he didn't bleed to death outside of the local bar. All the slavemongers grouped up and they began their slow journey away from the safety of the hub. That night, Hot Dog healed up enough that he could walk on his own. At least he was recovering from his wounds. They traveled all night and the following day. Here's the thing though. Hot Dog is an opportunist and he won't let this kind of situation stop him. He might be a slave today, but he's biding his time for the right moment to break free. The group continued to slowly travel into the night. They weren't stopping anytime soon. The next morning, something happened. The men were jumped by a group of rabid bonehounds. The men broke out into combat. Hot Dog knew this was his moment. Not familiar with the area, he saw there was a settlement nearby on the map. If he could escape, he could seek refuge there. That moment he broke from the group, determined to free himself. Unfortunately for Hot Dog, one of the guards noticed and took chase. Now being shackled, you can't run very fast. This was bad for Hot Dog. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> one swift hit was all it took to take him out. Hot Dog pretended to be knocked out and the guard left to help the rest of his men before bringing Hot Dog back to the group. He waited a moment, slowly got back up and continued to make his escape. He knew in order to get away, he needed to break free from his shackles. Luck was on his side, he managed to pick the lock before they came back for him. Again a free man, but considered an escaped slave. He would need to lay low for some time to get back on his feet. The settlement was in sight, he was so close to safety. Escapee? Uh oh. As soon as Hot Dog realized this was a mistake, he was taken out by a harpoon gun mounted on the walls. He blacked out for a moment from the impact. He came to, but was too wounded to get up and run. He had no bandages, so he began to crawl away, hoping to find help. Hot Dog lost too much blood. He blacked out again while some men ran out and captured him. They brought him into the settlement and healed him up. At least he wasn't going to bleed to death. There was still hope for Hot Dog yet. Once he was healed, the guard took him to a building deep into the base. There were beds and cages everywhere. He was taken to the rooftop and left in a cage. Hot Dog regained consciousness and realized he'd escaped his captors only to be captured by someone else. Apparently these guys were soldiers from the Holy Nation. More like a bunch of religious fanatics. More captured men were brought into the neighboring cages and locked up. That night, the soldiers came up and released the men from their cages. It looked like they were going to be taking them somewhere else. 
Still wounded, Hot Dog limped along with the group. He was determined to escape and regain his freedom again. At this point, it's been more than four days without eating anything. It was starting to take its toll on Hot Dog. All of a sudden, the soldiers turn around and ran back to the settlement. Hot Dog was alone with another slave. This was his chance. Well, unfortunately for him, the guards at the gate noticed him shambling away and went after him. Hot Dog desperately tried to escape. It only took one hit and he was down. They scooped him up and took him back to the base. Into another cell he went. They weren't feeding him, but they were keeping him alive. They released him from the cell and made him go with another group. Before they left the city, the soldiers left to chase after someone again. Hot Dog took this opportunity to hide by the wall. He removed his shackles and tried to hide in the shadows. Looking over this awful place, he realized there was only two ways in and out, and they were both really heavily guarded. That night, he used darkness as his cover and tried to sneak out of the front gate. Well, he wasn't very sneaky, and as soon as he got close to the guards, they noticed him and beat him down. Captured and healed up again. Once he was patched up, they sent him on his way again. He was outside of the cursed city, but wounded, shackled, starving, and surrounded by guards. It happened again. Most of the men took off after something, and it was just one guard. The last guard took chase and left Hot Dog and the other prisoner to themselves. It was now or never. Hot Dog's timing could not have been worse. As soon as he turned to make his escape, the guard turned around and immediately noticed. In a crazed panic, Hot Dog tried to escape while being beaten down by the guard. The final hit was so strong that it completely severed his right leg off. Well, that's gonna complicate things. The guard scooped him back up and returned to the base. Beaten down, but not defeated. Hot Dog didn't care if he lost both legs. He was not gonna die in this place. He was able to pick the lock and escape his cage, but was immediately caught and placed back in his cell. No matter, he picked the lock again and escaped his cage. He thought maybe he could sneak to the roof and ambush a guard. At this point, he didn't have any better ideas. As he crawled up to the top of the steps, he was caught and placed into another cage. Hot Dog was determined though. For days, he constantly broke out of his cell and tried to sneak out of the base. On the ninth day, things were quiet at the base and he made another attempt to escape. Things were looking good, until they caught him again. At this point though, Hot Dog's stealth skills were quite high. He used to cover the darkness again and tried to sneak out. It worked! He made it past the guards and out of the rear gate. He hugged the wall and continued to crawl through. Glancing at his map, he knew the only safe place to go was back to the hub, which was a very very long way to crawl. Hoping to leave the Holy Nation for the last time, he began crawling away. Crawling through the wilderness was not easy. He had to avoid the main road so he wouldn't get captured again. He was also starving to death. It was 10 days since he's last eaten. If he couldn't find food soon, he'd die. As he made his way south, he noticed some fighting off in the distance. Some of the Holy Nation men were jumped by river raptors. Maybe we'd find some meat there. He didn't want to backtrack that far, but he had no choice. He had to try and find some food soon. As he made his way over there, some more fighting broke out. It ended soon enough though and he was in the clear. He made it to the river raptor's corpse. He found some foul raw meat. This wasn't even edible. He took it anyways just in case. Hot Dog still had some luck though. There was a bone dog corpse too. He found raw meat that was edible. His risk of coming back might have just saved his life. He couldn't eat it raw though. He quickly built a campfire. He placed the meat over it to cook. Not much longer now. The first piece of meat was finished and he ate it right away. More men were coming, but he needed to finish cooking the rest of his food to take with him. He managed to finish cooking everything and right before the men got too close, they were jumped by river raptors and gave Hot Dog a window of opportunity to escape. He crawled for another day and a half straight southbound until he passed by a small farm. He was out of food, so he took advantage of it being nighttime and snuck in. He crawled into the nearest shack and ended up finding some more food. After picking the lock to a chest, he really hit the jackpot. There is plenty of food for the rest of the journey back to the hub. He snuck out of the shack and left the farm behind him. Looking over his map, he still had a ways to go. He knew he'd be able to find an ally in the hub that could help him find a robotic leg replacement. Hot Dog was not finished yet. The next afternoon, there were more bandits on the road. 
and encountered another drifter that was traveling alone. Hot Dog knew he had to hide. The poor drifter got swarmed and he was knocked out. Hot Dog used this opportunity to loot him and see if there's anything of value on him. Though he didn't have any food or items, his clothing was much more suitable than Hot Dog's. He took his pants and jacket and left before he regained consciousness. Not much further now. Upon further inspection, Hot Dog realized that he had a bounty on his head for 36,000 cats. He was wanted for charges of burglary, assault, and most importantly, escaping prison. Carrying a bounty on your head like this made things even more dangerous. On the 15th day, a group of Holy Nation soldiers were passing right by Hot Dog. He was in the middle of the road and tried to sneak off and go unnoticed. Unfortunately, they saw him. Not even concerned for the bounty, they beat him unconscious and left him for dead by the road. His chest was severely wounded and it was only going to get worse. He didn't have any first aid kits to patch himself up either. He was so close though. He continued crawling his way towards the hub. His wounds were too severe and he became unconscious again and slowly began bleeding out. So much hope, so much potential, all gone because of one fatal mistake in getting caught. It turns out Hot Dog wasn't very lucky at all. And just like that, Hot Dog, the twice escaped slave with a bounty of 36,000 cats, died on the road in the middle of nowhere. Welcome to Kenshi. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. This is just one of my few experiences playing Kenshi so far, and if you're a fan of open world games where you control your own story, I highly recommend checking it out. As always though, thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one.